Hey guys, I'm Ryan Zaylor. Thanks for watching. Today's video is going to be on the Echo CS 355T. Uh, it's a top handle trim saw, and I absolutely love them. I've been running them for about seven years now, and uh, we're going to go over the maintenance and uh, just give it a review. So, to start off, when you buy one brand new from a uh, certified dealer, it's going to come with a one year commercial warranty or a five year con uh, consumer warranty. So, if anything happens to it that's not running right, you can take it back in and uh, they'll fix it but they come with this bar cover keeps your chain and you safe from getting cut also the cool thing about these saws is they don't require a whole bunch of tools um, the main one you're gonna need is just the regular saw tool it's got the flat head end and then the other one for the spark plug and a couple of the other um, screws on here you need the um, uh, star bit. I'm sorry. I couldn't think of the word for a second. You need the star bit head, but uh Anyways, these are 13 millimeter nuts And so we're just gonna start with the basics. Uh, you just got your shot. Uh, you just got your saw You started running it. Maybe you uh, hit some dirt you hit a nail whatever the case may be or you just haven't cleaned it in a while and uh, you got a bunch of sawdust and Whatever else caked up in there. You're gonna take these two nuts right here You're gonna loosen them up it's also good to make sure that the brake is off uh, for later on when you're putting the chain back on because for some reason when you go to fire it up after running a little bit it seems to want to loosen up I haven't quite pinpoint exactly how that is yet but another little pro tip take your flathead here this is your adjuster that little uh, screw right here this is how you the tensioner you can move the bar forward and backwards take it back I don't know seven or eight twists and uh, again that'll make it easier when you go to put this back on later so inside the cover here again this one's brand new so it's super clean but this will get caked up this is your brake that little ring in there when you uh, when you engage this lever that ring pops open and it stops this from spinning but uh, you want to make sure that's clean there's your tensioner sometimes that little screw in here that'll break uh, especially if you know you're not cleaning it all the time and it gets really Old, you might need a new one of those. You don't need to get a whole new cover. A lot of these parts are uh, they're pretty cheap and you can just pop them in and out. So again, to pop that one out, here's where you need that star bit. Take that off. There's a little uh, plastic, plastic uh, piece right here that holds it down in place. And then the rest of it just slides down in. Here's the lever also for your brake. But all right, so we, uh, we got our cover off. Now we need to take a new chain. Just push the bar back a little bit. Chain comes right off. Mm -mm. You got a little bit caught up there. Alrighty, and your bar, that just slides off as well. So if you need a new bar, <coughs> you can take this off, get a new one, put it back on. Down in here, up on top, you have an oiler. That's what's gonna be taking the oil that you put in the tank and spitting it out on the bar and the chain to keep it cool. So you always wanna make sure you put oil in when you add the gas. But all right, we got our new chain. We got it cleaned out. If you don't have an air compressor, I got a cheap one. It was a Craftsman for like $100. And um, the, the air head right here, you can get one of those at the hardware store for like seven or $8. But take that, blow it out really good, get all the cracks and crevices, and that'll really help you out. Uh, for getting these saws to last a lot longer for you. Maintenance goes a long way. So anyways, we bought a new chain, we got a new bar, whatever the case may be, or we're just done cleaning it. Slide it back on. It's easier if you put the uh, chain around the sprocket first, I feel. And the sprocket is behind this wheel right here. You'll see the teeth on it uh, when you're looking down over top of it. So slide that bar all the way back, get it all lined up. Move this up out of the way. It helps if you're uh, over top of the chain stop. And that little white piece right there that I got stuck on, that's a chain stop. So if this chain does pop off, that'll help catch it so you don't get cut, which is really nice. <clears throat> so anyways, get the chain lined up. Make sure it's on the sprocket. You should be able to run it. And uh, of course, there's going to be a little bit of slack, but you want to pull that out and get it nice and tight. 
Again, you cleaned out your cover here. Now here's another little pro tip I was taught. Grab the tip of that bar after you put your cover back on. There we go. <laughs> Anyways, here, put our nuts back on. You can just do these hand tight for right now. All right, so they're hand tight. And as you saw, that just slid right back on. That was because I adjusted the uh, tensioner earlier. I just was having a hard time getting it back over the, the butt end here for a reason. But anyways, uh, that's why it lined right back up. If you're going to put that back on and it's it's not the, the screw holes are lined up, but you're not it's not fully on, you might have a gap like that big. That's because that tensioner, the little uh, the point that sticks out that goes into the bar there, that's not lining up. So that might be your issue. Just mess with your tensioner a little bit. Make sure they're lined up and it'll, it'll get in together nice and tight like that. So back to what I was saying, grab the tip of the bar. Now that you have it back on and you have your nuts uh, just hand tight, grab the tip of the bar and you see all that slack right there in it? See how it moves up and down? So essentially you're gonna pull out and up. And what that does, did you see how that tightened that up a little bit? All right, there's a lot of slack in here. But when you adjust that tensioner now, Ready, tighty, lefty, loosey. Check it. That's not bad right there. We're gonna tighten these nuts up here. Once they get just past that hand tight, I just go a little bit farther. They don't have to be wrenched down on super tight. You wanna make sure they're on tight enough though so they don't come off. So anyways, after you get that first one tight, you don't really have to hold it up for the second one. But there you go. Change the back on, make sure it's gonna run. Test your brake, brake's good. All right, so now we got that covered. Um, another big one that people forget about, right back here, super easy to access, is the air filter. Just turn it, unlock it, that's the cover. Pop that off, and you can either get a new one or you can clean it, but this is how you get into the air filter. <laughs> Doing everything upside down right now, it's a little different. <laughs> All right, what else am I missing on this side? I think that's about it. So moving over to this side, another thing that's nice about uh, Echo, I think pretty much all of their saws, you have orange and black for your gas and oil. Black is oil, orange is gas. It's almost always the same, but it also will tell you, has a little gas, <laughs> a little gas tank for the gas, and then it has a uh, chain tooth for the uh for the oil again there's the <clears throat> there's the warranty information so here's your pull start and i haven't put any gas or anything in this yet because this is my giveaway saw uh, it's brand new and i'm going to leave it that way for whoever wins it and if you haven't gotten it yet all you have to do is subscribe to this channel like the video for the giveaway uh there's a little bit of time left subscribe like and leave a comment. That's all you have to do. There's no buying, there's no paying, no credit cards, no nothing. That's all you gotta do to get out here. But anyways, so this is your pull cord. That's how you start it. Here's something you may not know. To choke it, right here's an extra safety. So you depress that, pull up on the trigger, and then right up here, this is your stop and also your choke. So if it's cold and you haven't started it or you haven't ran it in a while, you need to choke it. You hear somebody say, choke it, didn't you choke it? Take that down, pull your trigger up, and slide it all the way forward and it'll stay like that. After you ran the saw a few times, it's almost every time, one, two, three, and on that third one you'll hear rup, up, 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 and it'll putter a little bit. Then you know to just pull the trigger and you saw that that came back a little bit. You can also just use your finger and pull it back a little bit right there. It's like kind of a half choke, but if you pull the trigger, it usually does it anyway. One, two, and after that second or third pull, it's usually gonna fire right up. Let it idle for a second. And uh, there you go. Again, another one I forgot to mention is it does have a primer right up on top here. You can give it a few primes. Um, and that'll help get some gas down into, into there just to get it started as well. So another big one that a lot of people don't know about is you have these three screws up here. You have a T, an H, and an L. And the T is not for the throttle. It's actually your idle. So when you're adjusting your idle, you don't wanna have it turned up too high because if it's up too high and you're up there idling, it'll actually start running the chain. And if it's hanging off of you, you might get cut. It's just, it's not a good situation. You don't want it to be too high. 
Um, so you're gonna play with that. And also when you get these saws, they come, this is you know from the factory, it has all the safety and everything. Um, they're not bored out. So if you wanna do any adjustments to it, these are minor adjustments that you can do to it, but they're already regulated, so you can't go too far with it. Anyways, you have the L and the H as well. So that is your low end and your high end, meaning when, uh, when you're letting off the gas on that low end, if you have it down too low, the saw is actually gonna shut off on you, okay? But if you have it way too high, it's gonna still be idling a little bit. And then the same on this high end, you may be pulling the trigger and you're full bore, but it's only sounds like it's like half halfway and you're like, why doesn't it sound like it has any power? Turn that H up a little bit and you might notice that power is gonna be a little bit more there. But again, don't go too high with it, especially uh, if you're a newer climber because <laughs> You get a saw running really fast, it can have some kickback on it and you don't wanna get, you don't wanna get any cuts. So those are three big ones that a lot of people don't really know about or even mess with and they just think that the saw has a problem. It could just need adjusted a little bit. So that's your carburetor that you're, you're actually adjusting right there. Another big one that a lot of people miss and it's gonna be really hard to see on the camera but it does have a bar tooth right here and then it has a plus and a minus. Right next to these two and if you get into the, uh, the uh, owner's manual will have this information as well. I think it's like page uh, 28 or something like that. But uh, right below these two screws, down in here, there's another one and it is, I need more light. It's flathead, okay? And that's your oiler adjuster. That's gonna control how much oil, when I had that cover off and up on top there, how much oil's going into your bar. If your bar and your chain are getting like really hot and you start getting burrs and it's, not running correctly, you might not be getting enough oil. First of all, make sure you have oil. And then if you do have oil and you think that it's enough, um, <clears throat> check that oiler. It may not be enough oil actually going to the bar. But I think that was a pretty good overview of it. Um, other than that, one more is the spark plug. I forgot to mention the spark plug and the fuel filter are the other two that you can go over with that tune-up kit. To get to that spark plug right on the back here, you're gonna need that star bit again. And I'll oh, get that out of the way. Right back there, you twist that, this cover comes off, and then the little rubber piece, pull that off, unscrew, put this down in there, unscrew your uh, spark plug, put it back in, there you go, you got a new spark plug. And then the last one, up here on the orange on the gas tank, if you look down in there, again, I'm probably not going to be able to show you with this camera the way it is, but if you look down in there, and again, if you get in that owner's manual as well, you have a fuel filter which is essentially just a little block and it hangs off of a little, uh, looks like a fish tube, air tube. And what that's doing is, is that's getting any of them impurities out of your fuel. Maybe you got a little bit of water in it, maybe you got a little bit of sawdust, dirt. It's gonna help catch that so it doesn't get into the motor and mess it up. But uh, you can also change those out periodically as well, especially if you think that you had some gas in the water. But that's it, after you're done with it, it's got the off switch right up here. You just turn it off and it locks in place until you're done click it back up, pull it once or twice, and you're ready to go. Uh, I hope you learned something from this video. I highly recommend them because they're very durable. I swing around from trees all the time and they get banged up into logs and branches, pulling them through canopies. They're super tough, uh, easy to replace the parts. You know, if, if you want more of a breakdown, I guess I can go over that another time because uh, this is already a long enough video. But there's all these little screws, like the brake handle is very easy to replace. These covers are all cheap to replace. And again, they got that five year warranty uh, if you buy it just as a consumer. So that's awesome as well. But I hope you learned something. Uh, leave a comment down below if there's anything else that you'd like me to cover. And thanks again for watching.